Let me come to you, uh, Professor Geim. Are you there? Yes, I am. Well, you listened, of course, uh, to your uh, compatriots, um, your reaction. Uh, would you say that uh, Eritreans are better off today than they were perhaps 25 years ago? It depends on, your, on how you measure it. But in an occasion like this, the question that springs mind is, what would the 60,000 Eritreans that were martyred to achieve national independence, say, if they were to witness what has been unfolding in the country during the last 25 years. And the simple answer to that would be, if they were to see what is going on in the country and compare it to the expectations they had, and the reasons why they laid down their lives, they would simply turn in their graves. They wouldn't believe what is going on, what is happening in their name. Eritreans, we are stuck in the past. We're endlessly celebrating the glorious past. But what have we got to show for the last 25 years? If we look at the fundamental things that have been affecting our society, uh, the government's myopic economic policy based on hostility to so private, private ownership and the private enterprise has brought our country to its knees. The economy is dominated by the incompetently managed uh, Party, I mean, firms of the ruling party and the public sector. There is no private sector in the country. In a country that is just recovering from 30 years devastating war, construction, the construction industry plays a key role. But the private sector is ban banned from private, from the construction industry since 2006. And the only enterprises that are active in the construction industry are firms belonging to the party. The open-ended national service has literally degenerated into forced labor or modern form of slavery. And uh, tens of thousands of Eritreans have been voting with their feet. Recently, the Wall Street Journal described Eritrea as the fastest emptying country in the world. And that is quite sad to see one's country being described as the fastest emptying one. It is hollowed out of its most important resource, human labor. So simply stated, the promises of the struggle that are people fought for heroically have been betrayed. And the government does not seem to realize the damages it is causing to its people. And it is a very cause it fought for. And I am not sure what the solution to that is, unless the government wakes up and realizes and relinquishes power and hands it over to the people and realizes or admits that it has tried but failed miserably. I don't think there will be any uh, way out from the quagmire our country has sunk in. What about uh, the fact that uh, Simon um, says that uh, Eritrea, in fact, happens to be one of those few countries uh, in Africa that have, in fact, uh, met the Millennium Challenge goals? Doesn't that translate in uh, improved quality of life of the people of Eritrea? Uh, to give the devil his due, I think the government has achieved uh, its uh, goal in primary health care. But that should not be exaggerated. It is only in primary health care. Because the large majority of Eritreans that are suffering from serious illnesses are receiving treatment in Sudan at a very, very high cost. That does not mean Eritrea doesn't have medically qualified 
doctors, but they don't have enough equipment and there are no enough, uh, there are no medicine, uh, su supply of medicine. And uh, most people are traveling to Sudan to receive treatment, but in primary health care, I think the achievements have been uh, remarkable. But since Eritrea is a closed society, uh, this has not been scrutinized by outside observers, and it remains to, miss, to be seen whether the achievements could withstand critical scrutiny of independent uh, assessors or uh, examiners. But I think Salam told me uh, in the beginning yesterday when she called me, we should not only focus on the negative uh, aspects of the problems, but we should also look at the positive achievements. Primary health care is one. Education started very well, but the national service has actually had a very negative impact on educational achievements because most parents, especially in the western and the eastern lowlands, uh, have withdrawn their daughters from education, from primary and secondary education, to avoid their participation in national service for fear of perceived or actual, actual uh, sexual violence. And that has detrimentally affected the participation of women, especially among Muslims, but generally among the whole population. If I, Very interesting. If I